Hello, welcome back. Happy Halloween. How's everybody been? Again, missed a week off last week, got a little bit busy doing bits and pieces, but we're back. And it is indeed Halloween. And that kind of got me thinking, or maybe even a little bit inspired. I've been talking about mixing it up on the channel for a while now, and uh, instead of just spending shitload of money on <laughs> retro games, uh, I should really start doing a little bit more playing as well. In all fairness, I do play a lot of games. It's mostly uh, newer, current-gen stuff on the PS5. But uh, I wanted to start replaying classic games that I've played back in the day, or maybe that I haven't played before, and do reviews of them for the channel. It happened to be Halloween, and also, as you guys know, I am a huge Resident Evil fan, so I've been inspired to create a new series called Replay. Get it? I thought that was really clever. <laughs> um, so yeah, with with that in mind, I thought, you know, what best to kickstart this little series of videos than Resident Evil. So you guys know I've spoken about it many times before on the channel. I'm a huge Resident Evil fan. I have got a relatively long history with it. Um, I think let's start the introduction by just talking about my history with Resident Evil. It all started off with this bad boy. You guys should all recognize this. This is Resi Evil 1 for the PS1, the very first game that came out. And I don't know if I've mentioned this before, but we never had a PlayStation when we were growing up. We had Mega Drive and then an N64. So I never actually played this when it came out. However, just the cover art, all right? This is obviously Chris with his assault shotgun. Just the cover art for this game, I remember seeing it in the catalogues and magazines and stuff, made me really want to play this game. Do you know what I mean? It was just something about it. This dude there is clearly an action guy, clearly scared off his face, and you know, the title Resident Evil. I knew that it was like a zombie game, and you go around, you got the shotgun, you're killing zombies, and you're, you know, survival horror. Shout out to Dangerous in Battle. He was a huge fan of Resident Evil as well back in the day and he had them all Resi 1, 2 and 3 and used to go on about how great they were, how awesome games they were and I got really jealous, I'm like this is unfair, I really wanted to play Resident Evil but see as, as kids we're not going to go out and buy a Playstation just to play it. Um, so yeah I never got to play these when they came out, was that a, <laughs> a good thing or a bad thing, I don't know. So anyway, after the N64 came out, obviously as a Nintendo fanboy, we went and got the GameCube and to everybody's shock, maybe horror, <laughs> Capcom struck up a deal with Nintendo where they gave them exclusive rights to mainstream Resident Evil games for like two, three, four years, something crazy like that. They said GameCube is going to have exclusive rights of Resident Evil. And you know, I thought that was great. And they uh, they launched it with a trailer for this Resident Evil 1 remake. So, uh, without knowing which year this came out in 2002, it says in the back. The original one came out in 1996. So that's barely, what, six years. So within six years, they wanted, Capcom wanted to remake the original Resident Evil. And I think I've seen a few videos on it before where they said that... Uh, Essentially, obviously there are a lot of limitations with the PlayStation hardware to what they actually wanted to do. And the vision that they, they originally had Shinji Mikami was never really fully fulfilled. So they, they decided to remake Resident Evil 1 on the GameCube. And this is, in fact, my personal copy that I bought when it first came out. Uh, yeah, and I absolutely love this game. I thought it was, it was not just great fun. <laughs> if anybody's played Resident Evil, then uh, they'll know all about how they played. But I thought in terms of the style of gaming, I'm a big Halloween fan. I love everything supernatural. This is one of my favorite times of the years. Uh, time of the years, time of the year, with all the spooky TV shows, the Halloween costumes, the parties, you know, ghost stories. I've got plenty of ghost stories if anybody's interested. <laughs> um, so to play a game which instead of your typical Mario's or Golden Eyes, 
which actually is trying to scare you and put you in a horror aspect, you know, jumping out or giving you that fear, what's happening, what's around the corner. Um, I thought it was amazing. And, well, we're going to cut to the game in a bit, so I'm going to give you a bit of a deep dive about the game. Loved it, played every, every minute of it, and then promptly put it on the shelf. I'm not going to talk about the other Resident Evil, so what I've done with it since then. Fast forward to current year, and I've been going through the Resident Evils a lot lately with uh, Biohazard and Village and I thought, you know what, I knew that they had released these for the PS4 I thought, sack it, you know what, I'm going to get it for the PS4 because I knew that, obviously, it'll play on my PS5 This is Origins Collection It comes with Resi 0 and 1 Remake I've Obviously, I've got 0 as well on the GameCube I haven't, I haven't played it, I haven't played Resi 1 since the GameCube days, because obviously there's so many other games since then. So I was inspired, I thought, you know what, I'm going to replay Resident Evil 1. I thought it's great fun, and it's old school, and it'll take me back. And that's essentially what I did. So, with it fresh on my mind, let's cut to some video where I wax lyrical about all things Resident Evil. Enjoy. Before we start talking about some of the things I made, RE Remake, great, let's have a quick chat about the original on the PS1. Well, Cassie mine back, but this was a, a time when most people were used to cartridge based games, you know, SNES, Meg Drive, Game Boy. So the leap to the PS1 with its CD backed data capacity meant for the first time ever, you know, we had games with full video, lots of quality music and cutscenes and all the rest of it and Resident Evil 1 was no no different Capcom went over and above <laughs> what were other people were doing at the time when they recorded this full introduction with uh, actors who they just picked up in Japan at the time to uh, act out the introduction to the game and uh, the quality is you know legendary now right <laughs> It's so funny the uh, the quality of the actors that they got in there. These guys have become cult favourites of the franchise now. Uh, if you go on so social media, you'll see people interviewing them and them having a replay of the original game. They're all good sports, and uh, I think they did a fantastic job. Let's search for him separately. I'll check the dining room again. The other thing I want to touch on okay. is the. Also now famous quality of the script. Clearly the, the actors gave it their all, but uh, the lines that are dropped in this game are legendary. Here's a lockpick. It might be handy if you, the master of unlocking, take it with you. This is one of two lines which will probably go down in Resident this Evil lore as being absolutely classics. Oh, the second of which being... That was too close. You were almost a Jill sandwich. <laughs> You're right. Barry, thanks for saving my life. Alright, let's get on to the meat and veg, shall we? Heading over to the remade version. This is PS4 quality. The first thing you'll notice is the quality of the graphics. There was a huge jump in quality from the PS1 to the GameCube and then with the recent uh, PS4 HD update you get the even better crispness with the, uh, with the visuals. The level of detail and the quality of the lighting is incredible. Uh, you do really feel like you're playing in a high-end animated movie. And considering this is 20 years old now, it's even more incredible. With Resident Evil 1, what you essentially get is one and a half games for the price of one. Mainly because you can choose between two separate characters to play as. You can either be Jill Valentine, who's the chick on the screen, uh, or you could play as Chris Redfield. And essentially, there's a slightly different story route 
and character interactions that happen based on who you choose. Uh, also, uh, the difficulty is slightly changed in I that uh, you get a different amount of uh, memory, not memory, <laughs> items that you can carry. Jill gets to pick up more items, she's got more item slots and she also gets to be the master of keys. Whereas Chris has limited slots and he has to go around and find keys to unlock various doors. So essentially if you want the easier game, he plays Jill. If you're more for a challenge, then he plays Chris. And like I said, you interact with different characters with Jill's playthrough. You don't even know who Rebecca Chambers is, but you get to spend more time with Barry and so on. So essentially, Resident Evil is a zombie game. Uh, based in a mansion, obviously, with an added layer with corporate conspiracy, subterfuge, and a healthy dose of mystery survival horror. The, th the thing that it's famous for now is its tank controls. Essentially, you, you can only move in limited directions and you spin around on the spot. They kind of fix this now with the PS4 version. You can use the analog stick to uh, to turn around while you're already moving, so it does modernise it a little bit. But you can see also the general game has a fixed view camera, so the backgrounds are already pre-rendered, uh, which is why they look fantastic, and the camera is fixed, and you navigate navigate it around with various animations for lighting, fires, candles, and that sort of thing. The one thing I will mention on the controls and the camera, however, is when the perspective does jump as you move around the environments, the way that the controls work is they point you in a certain direction. And as soon as the orientation of the camera view changes, uh, that orientation is no longer the same as what you were doing in the previous one. So you have to readjust the direction that you're pressing the analog stick in order to move in the right way. It does take quite a bit of getting used to. You can see on the screen how quickly the perspective changes. And each time uh, the direction you're playing, you're pressing on the analog has to be reset. No. They kind of get around this by keeping you going in the same direction after you jump, but then the instant you try and change, it's automatically changed to the new perspective, so just something to be aware of. Resident Evil, it's famous because essentially you've got a limited number of items that you can carry around with you and you have to decide what you take, be it health or weapons or ammo. And then there's also gameplay items that you need to carry around with you, like keys or puzzle items. So there's that little bit of strategy that you have to use when you're going around. The save points are only in limited areas as well. You can't just hit the menu and go save. You have to find the typewriters, which are dotted around and to save you have to use an ink ribbon which takes up an item slot. I kind of get around this by giving you item boxes that you can uh, essentially dump stuff in and return back to whenever you need to however it's just a matter of convenience and what you need at the time which again describes a big portion of the game which is all about backtracking exploration investigation you've got this huge mansion level which you need to go get around with locked off areas which uh, depending on how far you've gone in the game uh, essentially it just shows where you need to go in order to progress as you slowly open up new areas based on puzzles you've completed you can explore more and more of the mansion you unlock more and more of the story and deeper and deeper you go. Uh, you're not completely limited to the mansion. There are other areas. I won't spoil them if you haven't uh, played it, but it does mix it up nicely, get a change of scenery, and again, it's all about the story as it unwraps. 
which is I guess part of how the difficulty in the game ramps up as you progress you get more weapons the grenade launcher or a shotgun or a magnum it essentially changes how you interact with the baddies and it helps you play with the various bosses which are sprinkled in which are also obviously now legendary essentially overall the game has a huge amount of replayability there were like a series you know regular things which they sprinkle in all the games now which is based on replayability you've got the various difficulty settings you can unlock loads of different weapons uh, and loads of different outfits for the various characters and you do this by completing various challenges set by the game. Most of them are based upon time, uh, how quickly you can progress and finish the game on the different difficulty settings. Now legendary items like the unlimited rocket launcher which is like the creme de la creme <laughs> You finish the game in the hardest setting with the quickest amount of time and you get a weapon which essentially breaks the whole game. You can defeat everybody with one hit. It's great. Overall, it's a timeless classic. Uh, you can tell just by watching it. It's, it's a great bit of fun. And even now, it definitely stacks up against modern games which are coming out. So I thought this was worth putting in. Obviously everybody knows that Capcom have been slowly remaking all of the classic Resident Evil games. They started with 2 remake which was excellent. They followed that up with number 3 which left a little bit to be desired. But then earlier this year they came out with number 4 which quite frankly was absolutely incredible. So you should definitely check that out. But. Uh, some fans have taken upon themselves to essentially have a go at remaking Resident sure. Evil 1 remake again. <laughs> so they've, they're using the engine and the system that was uh, essentially developed for Resident Evil 2. I think it's made in the Unreal Engine. Uh, taking character models from Resident Evil 3 remake and recreating Resident Evil 1 but uh, by themselves and you can see by the by the video footage this looks incredible as well uh, given that it's it's all fan made so it's it's not endorsed by Capcom this has nothing to do with them I think they were going to release a demo so that people could have a go free of charge but uh, let's face it Capcom are gonna shoot down that idea straight away uh, but just, it, it does make me think after finishing uh, the remake how good a model modern version of Resident Evil 1 would be. If you want my honest opinion, I think they're going to remake probably 5 next. Maybe they'll do Code Veronica. They might do 6, although that game needs so much work, I, I don't really think it's worth it. But I think eventually what they're going to do is we're going to end up as the all singing, all dancing creme de la creme remake of RE1 and hopefully they'll have a matching VR mode to go alongside it at launch uh, which essentially uses all the things that they've done in the recent games, all the modern 4K graphics to make Wallace be the quintessential Resident Evil experience I mean you can see what's on the screen, it looks fantastic. And I think it's going to be one of the best games ever made, so I'm well looking forward to that. Hopefully it'll come out soon. So yeah, hopefully you enjoyed that little walkthrough of the game. Hopefully I explained to you all the reasons why it's so good, but in summary, essentially, the graphics are, I would say, pretty unique how they did it, and the gameplay is classic, survival horror, and even though this is from 20 odd years ago, I still think it stacks up. It's got a really good story. The characters are good. <laughs> the voice acting is uh, <laughs> special. And yeah, I would genuinely recommend it. You could pick this up now, second hand on eBay, like I did for like eight quid. You get two great games. Uh, I'll probably leave Resi Zero for another replay. Uh, 
video in the future. I, I've never finished that one, so it would make more of an interesting gameplay experience, given that I've started it, obviously, because I bought it. Don't think I... I'm sure I probably got to the second level. I remember playing on the train. But, uh, yeah, I'll do that in an upcoming sequence or series video soon. I think before then, I'm currently doing Resi 4, obviously, on the replay, and then I'm going to play Hogwarts Legacy, because that's been sat there, courtesy of uh, a good colleague of mine, or ex-colleague of mine, uh, giving me that on the cheap. Shout out to you. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so that'll be coming up, up on the channel soon. Otherwise, enjoy Halloween, keep it spooktacular, and I'll 